Uh, good evening to everyone. On behalf of Department of Civil Engineering, KPR Institute of Engineering and Technology, I would like to welcome you all for the Tech Webinar Series 16, Industry Connect. Today, I would like to welcome our chief guest, Mr. Mr. Sanjay Devarajan, Mr. BIM Coordinator, Lupita Technology. He is having more than five years of experience in BIM, and today he is going to deliver a lecture on Building information modeling. Ma'am, please carry over this session, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So, just let me know whether my screen is uh, visible to you, everyone. So, if not, just let me know. Yeah, okay. Okay, hoping the my screen is visible. Okay, so I would like to continue the session in English. Uh, so this is Sandhya. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, whoever giving me this opportunity to take the webinar on emerging trending trends on BIM. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So get, before getting into the session, uh, so I would like to share some of my uh, uh, experience. So I'm a civil engineer with uh, eight years of experience in BIM field. Um, so first I started my career as a trainer and then uh, later uh, moved with the uh, uh, moved to an architectural field and uh, after that uh, I had uh, experience in uh, BIM field for uh, five years so, so totally I do have uh, eight years of experience in this field. So I would like to share some of my experience which I gained through my industries. So yeah this is what uh, the session is about. <clears throat> okay so okay so uh, after that uh, now i'm running my own firm called lupiter technology see my own startup uh, so this lupiter technology is specialized in the beam services as well as beam training um, all over the world so we are providing the service of beam services and beam training throughout the world so so uh, coming to the beam hope Everyone has heard about uh, this BIM. So, like, uh, not the full expansion. At least you could have heard about the word BIM. So, if you are a civil engineer, definitely uh, you could be heard from someone or uh, you could have seen in the website or whatever it is. So, what is that BIM actually? Um, so, uh, you could have heard from the people. They think the like. Uh, it's a 3D modeling. So, and uh, in the in some website also, so you could have seen uh, BIM as a 3D modeling, but it's not a 3D modeling. So, I just want to give a clarification about what is BIM and uh, what are the BIM we understood. So, even if you are uh, good in BIM, so it's okay. Uh, so, I just want to give uh, what is the process and what is the exact uh, term the uh, uh, term for a BIM and what are the applications we use in order to get the correct BIM and uh, so what are the uh, problems that we face in, in the uh, current in the, uh, current uh, situation and how to recover that situation. So these are the uh, topics about this uh, today's session. So uh, yeah, these are the topics that we are going to discuss. So coming to the problems in construction industries, so, so every industry has a problem, right? So this construction industry has a lot of problems. So you could have seen uh, a lot of uh, structural failures, uh, which is happening throughout the world. So a uh, bridge failure, or uh, it could be structural failure or architectural failure, anything. So it's happening, still it is happening. So why? Because it's all due to the non-collaborative uh, work performance. So, uh, what is that non-collaborative? So, you may ask, what is that non-collaborative? Uh, this non-collaborative is uh, in any uh, in when it comes to construction uh, of any building. So, all the engineers will collaborate together and perform a building. Uh, so, for example, if you want to construct a um, shopping complex, so uh, architect will be involved. A structural engineer will be involved and MEP engineer will be involved. So this uh, those uh, engineers will collaborate together and we they have to work. So this is the process actually. But uh, what is the process uh, we are following right now is totally different from the BIM. 
like we are we do architectural plan we do a structural plan and we do a mvp uh, design and uh, there won't be a collaboration between the uh, architect structural or mvp engineers so they will give the drawings and uh, the architect will give the drawings the structural engineer will do the design and the mvp will do the mvp design calculation and uh, they will they will submit to the contractor so they used to build a model with that uh, with those drawings which is submitted by the engineers so this is what the process is so uh, with those drawings they can construct the building but when uh, when it comes to the failure so suppose if the um, structure is failure due to failing due to some of the reasons so we couldn't find what is the reason for the failure uh, so for uh, where it is happening and what is the reason what is the actual reason exact scenario whether it could be the structural or it could be due to the uh, material or whatever it is so we couldn't able to find out properly if you work in a non collaborative so uh, what this bim does so it works on the basis of collaborate collaboration so this collaboration will help you to bring all the stakeholders which are throughout the uh, project the stakeholders means Uh, whoever involved in the project so uh, the architect or uh, structural engineers or mep engineers or, or a, a contractor or a consultant those all the the whoever involved in the project are called the stakeholders so uh, the stakeholders will be in a single platform so they can access the model they can see what uh, whatever is uh, whatever the um, thing is happening in the uh, project so they can able to track that so this is what we call it as a no, uh, collaborative so the bim does a collaboration so that uh, it could reduce a lot of problems which has been uh, faced by the current situation okay so let's see some of the typical problems that we face in a construction industry uh, so the main problem um, some of the problems are listed out here uh, so i will just tell you what are the pro major problems that we are facing uh it it's due to the improper documentation so improper documentation is so we used to create um plan section innovation so this is what the thing we are doing uh typically so we won't be uh, doing uh, uh doing the specification so if we want to do the specification so we need uh, some more time to do that and uh, these are the improper documentation so uh, the plan section elevation so with that plan section elevation so we could able to construct that's all so after that when it comes to a maintenance or management so we couldn't able to track what are the uh, things what is the life cycle of that particular material so uh, for example if we take uh, the paint so what is that uh, specific what is the specification for the paint what are all the chemicals which is which is used in the paint and what is the resistance thermal resistance and these values these are all the which comes under the specification Uh, so with that uh, with our method so what we are following is we do cad so using cad we can able to specify the graphical details in the model the graphical details in the sense uh, the it's nothing but length width and uh, height so for example uh, uh, a client is asking you to create a plan for the house so what you will be doing doing so you'll be creating a plan you'll be creating the section uh, what is the uh, thermal resistant for the wall so this will be th that there will be a separate document for that but we are not specifying in the model we are modeling so we are not specifying that in the cad so we do a separate document for that uh, i'm not so going to say about that we do a separate document but we are not feeding into the model so we are not specifying digitally what bim does is all the informations about the model will be specified digitally so that is what this is called the term will be called as building information modeling so this building information modeling it's a process it's not about the 3d modeling it's a process which has been used throughout the life cycle of the project so starting from the planning to management so it helps so in at the planning session so you will be doing the uh site analysis energy analysis um conceptual design so the bim doesn't creating the energy analysis conceptual design and site analysis 
and uh, when it comes to the design details so it can help you with the schematic planning it helps you to do, uh, do a structural analysis it helps you to do, do the heating and cooling load analysis for the mvp so uh, and then when it comes to a uh, construction phase it helps you to create the shop drawings for which is required for the um, uh, <coughs> installation of the walls or installation of the uh, structural elements which has been used in the uh, model or uh, building okay and uh, when it comes to the management uh, phase so it helps you to uh, collect the facility management data so the what is that facility management data so it's about the specification of each and every material which is used in the building uh, even from the firm a to z so what are the materials what who whatever the uh, elements which is used in the building the, which has uh, that has some life cycle so this facility management will be um, will collect all those data which is related for which is required for the uh, management purpose for the maintenance purpose so the bim will play role in all the phases of the building cycle so that is what it is called a building information modeling so here in the building um, model we are feeding the informations so you could have heard about some of the softwares under this uh, building information process so one of the software is called revit so the revit this revit is works on the process of uh, not works on this uh, which is mainly developed for the process of building information modeling so uh, in that revit uh, it's one of the software there are more software apart from revit so the uh, ecosim is there tecla is there all plan is there eco domus is there there are a lot of softwares around the world but why this uh, revit in, plays an important role it's because of the uh, widespread uh, because it has been used uh, by a lot of countries and um, comparing to the other software it, it's have lot of features other than that so that is why people are going for a revit and uh, this revit will help you to create the building information model so if you draw a wall so you can feed the informations so not only the length and width so we can able to feed the inf other informations like so what is the material which is used in the wall and what is the fire rating for this wall these informations this that is why we call it as building information modeling so we do the model with information so for each and every element which is used in the building okay so this uh, definition is definition is over uh, and uh, when it comes to the uh, problem so the first thing what i have told is due to the improper construction document and um, the second thing we used to uh, call uh, rework so lot of rework in the building if the drawing is not um, is not a coordinated one so for example uh, architect uh, architect has prepared some architectural drawing and structural engineer has prepared uh, some structural drawing so there won't be any collaboration between the model so a structural engineer and a architect engineer will not collaborate together so that uh, it will uh, lead to there 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 uh, it will lead to a mistake so that mistake when you try to execute in the model when you try to execute in the building in real time so you will get some errors somewhere at the building so anyhow uh, uh, it may be a column error or it could be a wall error or whatever it is so uh, if the error is happening in the building if the error is happening while doing the construction so it could to uh, it could lead to a rework it could waste your time so which is which has been spent on the um, um, Re rework so if there is a rework we need to spend extra time for that so obviously it will increase the uh, time limit which is uh, which has been applied for the construction so if the construction is uh, initially you could ask uh, estimated at some time so this construction will take 3 uh, to 4 months but uh, <clears throat> without bim it will take 5 months it will take 6 month also for a large building i uh, want to explain so <clears throat> what happens is so it may increase your time at that time there are two errors happening it it will increase the time as well as it will lead to a rework so there will be a <clears throat> material wastage also 
So you here you could get three problems: the rework, uh, material wastage, and the time. So the these are all the problems which are which have been uh, faced by current industry. And uh, so using BIM, we can able to find out the risk also. If there is a risk in the building, so for example, we could able to find out the hazardous area in the building. So if we do a building information modeling, if we prepare the uh, model with the digital information, so that we can able we could able to track where the error is happening. So we could able to find out the risk. So if there is a risk is happening on that on that area, so we could uh, uh, intimate the person, uh, the concerned person, so that he may uh, rectify the issue. So uh, I have uh, some of these uh, texts so which has been showed here. So the building consumed uh, consume 30% of raw materials and uh, uh, consume 42% of world energy. So um, there are uh, nearly uh, 30 percentage or more than 30 percentage of material which has been used regularly by our um, building construction while doing the construction. And uh, so some of the errors which has been given over here. Uh, lack of coordination, as I said uh, earlier, so uh, if you are following, if you are you know, doing the current method, the CAD method, so there won't be any coordination between the uh, stakeholders. The coordination means um, um, collaboration. So the ARC structure and MEP and the contractor and uh, so the material supplier. So there won't be any collaboration. If there is a collaboration between them, so it's easy to complete the model. It's easy to construct the building within a stipulated term at the proper time so that we can able to reduce the rework. We can able to reduce the time limit, which is which has been estimated by contractor uh, so that we can finish it off within the uh, limit. And there will be a return of investment for the client also. So, so I have repeatedly explained those uh, things. Okay. So coming to the so this building information modeling, it's a parametric 3D model. So what is the parametric 3D model? Uh, uh, I'm hoping everyone has been used CAD. Uh, so if uh, if you have if you could have worked in CAD, so when you try to um, create a plan in CAD. So what you will be doing is just use the line and you will be creating a, a rectangle and you will do an offset and you will call it as a room. But here it is not like that. So if you want to model a wall, if you want to construct a wall, you can pick a wall and you can draw and you can specify the, uh, spe uh, and you can specify the details. So apart from the graphical details, you can specify the non-graphical details. So you, the graphical details is nothing but the length, width and uh, uh, height and the non-graphical details is nothing but uh, the manufacturing detail and material specification. Those details will come under the non-graphical details, which is nothing but the uh, functional properties of the building. The graphical is the physical properties of the building. So we could be able to specify the graphical and non-graphical information in the building model so that it will be a digital 3D model. So uh, from this model, what are the informations we get? So we can able to extract the installation drawing, which means the shop drawings. Uh, we could able to get the facility management data from these model. And uh, so we can, will be getting the plan section. So the regular documentation thing, uh, section elevation, perspective, details, schedule. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, what, are, what is the cost and what is the uh, stipulated time? So how can we complete this project? So uh, what to do first and what to do second. So these details, we, with this model, we can able to extract those details, which is which will be useful for the construction. So this is the evolution. So first, uh, let me tell you the how this BIM has been evolved. And uh, so the first, uh, initially, so we do a hand drafting. If there is a construction, so we do hand drafting and we, we, do, uh, we do a plan section elevation. And after that, so we started to use a CAD for uh, doing that job, uh, plan section and elevations. So after that, it has been taken over by the building information modeling. So in this uh, building information modeling, 
so we are inputting the digital informations so we are feeding the uh, uh, non graphical information also so up to uh, computer aided designing cat so we feed only the graphical information so now uh, the world is going digitally so that it's it's very necessary to uh, produce the digital document so it's this building information modeling has been mandatory in some of the countries but not in our uh, <clears throat> country in some countries around the world uh, this bim <clears throat> this bim has been a mandatory one uh, even for the if you consider singapore uh, for a, a 5000 square meter uh, if the building is exceeding 5000 square meter area so the build, uh, this bim is very mandate mandatory and uh, this is going to be mandatory in future this is going to be mandatory in india also so at that time so we won't be depending on the cat so we have to move into the bim so if we have to move into the bim we should know so what are all the things we have to learn so in order to get the job in bim so what are all the skills required so that is what i'm going to explain over here okay <clears throat> so how it has been evolved so first we have uh, we started to uh, model using the line and then it has been converted to a digital line and then to a geometrical 3d modeling so up to this uh, uh, graphical information only plays a role so when it comes to the information modeling in bim so non graphical information has been taken over so that we could able to produce uh, the digital model okay so from this so these are the informations we get uh, the uh, floor plans sections elevations details so the detailed build, building information modeling the details when uh, when i try to say is uh, the uh, schedule uh, i mean uh, how many amounts of uh, bricks uh, what is the material and what is the quantity of material that we need to use uh what, what is the concrete volume what is the brick volume uh what is the cement how many cement bags required for the for this building this data we can able to calculate easily so when you use when you try to use the building information one second so <clears throat> what is that uh so here is a uh um, representation in picture so the left hand side you could see the model in the right hand side you could see a database so what is that we can able to extract the database from the model so when you try to model in a cat so you could see this model only you could see a 3d model only but when it comes to build uh, building information modeling you could get the database so this is the database so we can able to extract the informations of each and every material used in the model okay so uh, i i am repeating the word data so what are the what is the data the physical data the physical data is nothing but length width and height uh, material material you know so uh, the materials which has been used in the model uh, appearance how it appears and the cost to detail so cost for each and every element identity uh, it's about what is the material name actually what is the life cycle it's about the facility management i mean uh, what is the overall lifetime period for that material or for a wall or for a light or whatever it is and thermal property thermal property for each and everything uh, so how uh, how the fire resistance so how it withstands when it uh, exposed in fire so what is that uh, beam actually it's not a software package uh, like uh, if i do uh, if i study revit i will be a beam expert so that the, it it's not like that so if you do revit so you will just understand how to create a model that's it but you won't be learning what is the process behind it so when you uh, want to study a bim you should learn uh, if, uh, when you want to do a bim uh, architect or bim engineer or bim modeler so you don't require the software knowledge only apart from software knowledge you should know what is bim exactly what is the process uh, here i could able to explain uh, in a half hour only but 
um, if if I want to discuss about the BIM, it could uh, take more than uh, 24 hours because it, it's like that. Uh, it's a big process. It has uh, involved uh, lots of uh, standards and uh, it has uh, lots of benefits. I need to discuss the benefits. Uh, I need to discuss the levels. So what is the maturity level and what are the uh, standard or uh, uh, standards which has been uh, which have to be followed for uh, doing the model. So it's all the thing which come under the BIM learning. Okay, so it's not only the software package. So if you want to learn, uh, so you must understand what is the process behind it. So I can help you with uh, learning this BIM. Uh, if you want, you could contact me. I will just uh, uh, tell my email ID and phone number at the last so that you can contact me there also. And uh, BIM is a process which applies over to whole building cycle. So this is not a software package. As I said earlier, it's a process which applies to the overall building cycle. The building cycle I have explained over here. So uh, at starting stage, we'll start with the analysis and then we'll be moving to the detailed design that we'll be doing the structural design, uh, MEP design and the architectural design. And then we'll move on to the conceptual design. Uh, so here we'll be uh, doing the uh, how to do uh, the space planning and how to give the spatial design. So that we'll be doing here and uh, the programming. So this programming, uh, like after modeling, so we need to <clears throat> do the exact uh, calculation. We need to feed that. Uh, so we could have modeled uh, difficultly. So uh, if you see some of the architectural building, it's been modeled uh, like uh, difficult structure. So if it has a difficult structure, it it uh, it uh, it's need a lot of calculation. So that calculation will be done here, and then uh, renovation. So if there is any maintenance, so that we, it will cover that also. Yeah, this uh, operation and maintenance, actually th this will come like this. Uh, documentation and fabrication for uh, producing the shop drawing, construction 4D and 5D. It will do um, the simulation. A 4D simulation means uh, the process, how many, uh, sorry, how long it will take to complete the project. So that we can calculate uh, with the help of BIM and uh, construction logistic, which means the material details and other details that we can fee, uh, we can able to uh, produce here and the operation and maintenance. So since we are giving the material properties, it is able to track the information of the material. Suppose if the failure occurs, so that we can uh, 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 like so that we can uh, go through the document, the digital document, and we can find out so the errors. We can find out the material details and the contractor details, who are the contractor involved, whoever the supplier involved. We can able to track that so that we can rectify the issues easily. Okay. <clears throat> so what is the communication uh, and knowledge exchange? So what it differs from the current and the, the what is the BIM actually? So currently, what we are doing is, this is the, the left hand side, you could see the current uh, knowledge sharing and uh, with the BIM knowledge sharing. So here, um, if I if there is an error in a model, if there is an error in a drawing, we need to contact the architect. We need to contact the design consultant. We need to, uh, the contractor will not uh, do a design. So he, uh, he is the one who, who is going to execute the design, execute the design. So, uh, yeah, so the material supplier will work separately. The client will uh, do separately and site will be uh, inside. The site engineers will have a separate, uh, there won't be a collaboration. They will do separate work. And uh, the uh, manager, so they will do a separate work. He was manager. Yeah. So this is the current uh, process we are following right now. But when it comes to BIM, there will be one single model. There will be one digital model. So this digital model can be accessed by all the stakeholders which has been who are involved in the project. So the, it, it can be um, what uh, the, he can see the model. So this consultant, the design consultant, they can ha have an access to the model. This contractor can access the model. 
and the subcontract ca contractor can access the model the client can access the model then the facility manager can access the model and uh, the uh, construction site can access the man, uh, model so uh, everybody can access the model so that uh, this is a collaborative model which is uh, uh, created by the bim modelers without any errors so this model will be without error so that it can e easy it is easy to implement why it is without errors means uh, we can able to visualize the thing uh, in CAD, we could able to produce only the 2D, but here we are making it in 3D so that if there is a clash is happening in the model, so we can able to drag it easily uh, so that uh, it will be an error-free model. The BIM model will be an error-free model. So we need to produce like that in order to construct a good building. So we need to produce an error-free model. So this error-free model will reduce a lot of construction problem. So it will uh, give you a proper planning, proper documentation, uh, reduce a lot of rework, and uh, it will give you a good return of investment. Uh, and uh, it helps you to uh, uh, extract the facility data and or everything. So that is why uh, the people are changing to this BIM. And if you are a civil engineer or architect, so you must learn this process because it's a, one of the important Thing. So apart from this subject, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever you do, uh, you study in the uh, construction planning and scheduling, the same thing you are going to apply here. So it's not like apart from your syllabus, it's your syllabus. Construction, you could have learned the CPS, uh, PERT and GAN, sure, those stuff. Uh, so that is the same thing what uh, you are going to apply over here. So if, if you are interested in a construction management and if you are a student, of construction management, it is mandatory to learn this process. Even for every civil engineer, it is one of the um, mandatory to learn this process. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so the, this is the traditional process. Uh, if, if, uh, if we want to construct a building, so the drawing will be prepared and uh, the drawing set will be created and it will be given to the contractor. So they will do a model they will uh, construct a building. So what is the evolution? What is the new design process that we are following right now? So we'll be creating the model and uh, there will be a dra uh, the drawing set will be created and the building model also will be created, both. So this drawing set will be created, to, uh, will be given to the contractor to construct the building and this building information modeling will be saved for the purpose of facility management so that it will reduce the um, rework, it will increase the collaboration, it will give you a good return of investment. So, uh, whatever the, which I have told, I have explained over here. Okay. So, uh, yes. Okay. So, what is the industry uh, influence on BIM, uh, influence of BIM on industry problems? So that we have told already. So this is the 3D model visualization. Uh, so this is the 3D BIM model. So in BIM, we have lots of dimensions uh, from 3D to 8D, 9D also came. Uh, currently, uh, still we are for, uh, we are in the 8D and uh, it is moving towards the uh, 9D. Um, so in 3D, we will do a visualizing model. So this is the visualizing visualization model, which will give you uh, animation, walkthrough, rendering, the prefer application details, the clash detection details, these things will be given over here. So in 4D model, so you will get uh, what is the time which is required for constructing the building. And also you could ex extract the cost information also from this 4D model. Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, you could not extract the for, uh, for, uh, cost from the 4D model, you could extract the time uh, time limit which is required for the model and it will help you to uh, help you for the payment approval also. And the cost detail, we could, uh, uh, the 5D model, which give you a cost model, um, we could extract the material. So how much uh, material and what is the cost? So this detail we can extract from the 5D model. And there are uh, softwares which is related for every uh, dimension. So if you want to do a 3D model, so you need, uh, you can do with the help of a rivet. 
And uh, if you want to create a 4D model, you can do with the help of Anavisworks. And for a 5D model also, we do with the help of Anavisworks. And 6D model. So here we can do the energy analysis. So uh, the energy analysis is nothing but uh, how much amount of uh, uh, energy consumed by the building. Um, natural as well as the artificial lighting and uh, used it and, and also the materials, whatever the materials used in the building, they could produce some thermal resistance, they could produce some heat. Even uh, uh, we are also producing some heat, our laptops, our electrical uh, uh, panels, everything is producing some amount of uh, uh, thermal uh, energy. So uh, we need to calculate the thermal energy in order to uh, find out. So in, uh, this will help you find, uh, for maintenance we can find out how much amount of energy consumed by the building, building um, for one year or for the three years. So we can able to uh, collect those details uh, from the energy analysis. For this, we could use a rivet and we need a plugin to develop this uh, 6D model. Uh, that plugin name is called Autodesk Insight. So that using that model, uh, sorry, using that uh, plugin, we can able to produce the energy analysis. Okay. So for this 70, uh, there is a plugin called Kobe. So with that plugin, we can able to get the facility management data from the 3D model. So for all those stuffs, we need a 3D model. That 3D model should be produced with the help of Revit or the software which is related, which is relevant to Revit. Okay, so what is the advantage of BIM? Uh, it will help you to create uh, quickly so if the CAD is taking uh, half an hour to produce, sorry, if the CAD is taking uh, one hour to produce the plan section elevation means the same thing can be done by the Revit in half an hour. So it could reduce the time because in Revit, we can create the plan only. So automatically it could, uh, it could produce the elevation section and 3D view. So you don't need to spend extra time for each and everything. So it will it help you to draw quickly and more precisely without with accuracy. And uh, uh, yeah, so you could uh, get rid of the paper. So uh, up, uh, from the paper, you can go to the electronic model and it will be a digital uh, model with intelligent informations which are applied in that. So what is that uh, benefits? So it enhances the collaboration uh, and also enhances the performance of the building. Uh, it it's a greater predictability so that we can we can able to predict. So what uh, like uh, when it complete? So when it is going to complete? We can able to predict that if we have a uh, um, if we have a work without any errors, we can able to predict when it could be finished. We can able to say to the client, so this uh, project will be finished within the stipulated time and uh, it helps you to give a uh, fast delivery so the fast project delivery it reduce the risk factor and reduce waste and also increase the um, efficiency of the model okay and uh, so this are the level of development actually i could have discussed in that uh, uh, first itself, so I uh, I have told you about the life cycle, the planning, detailing, um, construction phase, and management phase. That in Revit, uh, in BIM term, we call it as LOD level of development. So in level of development, we have uh, uh, five things: LOD 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500. So uh, in L LOD 100, we'll be preparing the conceptual design, and LOD 200. So we'll be doing the design calculations like structural uh, structural calculations and uh, MEP calculations and architectural calculations. And in LOD 300, we could uh, feed the non-graphical information up to this. So we'll be feeding the graphical informations. And after this LOD 3, uh, 200, we'll be feeding the non-graphical information mod, uh, informations also in the project, also in the 3D model. And uh, this LOD 300 will give you the fabrication drawings, installation drawings, which is required for 
construction of the building. And uh, this 500 will give you the uh, record modeling. So it's all, uh, also called the record modeling. It will give you the facility management data for the building. And these are the softwares which has been used uh, for the BIM process. The in planning process will be using these. And uh, in, when it comes to authoring process, we'll be using the SketchUp, uh, BIM object, Revit. And for the analysis, what are the softwares? Uh, this analysis is nothing but uh, analysis we, uh, we do in the building model. So not everyone will do the model properly. So uh, somewhere uh, the mistake can happen. So that mistake can be uh, finded out by these uh, analysis um, software. And uh, we could use uh, we could uh, this use for collecting the facility data. No, sorry, not uh, for collecting the facility data, for collaborating everyone into the project. So, uh, BIM in pre-construction stage. So, what is the pre-construction uh, BIM benefits? And uh, so, in uh, pre-construction stage, it will uh, help you to um, um, reduce the number of change orders. So, uh, it and also. Uh, it will, uh, if there is a collaboration, so we will request for more number of information. Suppose uh, the consultant could have uh, done uh, some mistakes or uh, some wrong calculation in the design. That can be tracked when you try to uh, do a model in uh, 3D. So we could be able to find a difference between the um, uh, detailed model, I mean uh, the CAD model or the design, and when it comes to uh, 3D, so you could able to track the difference between both. So if there is a mistake somewhere in the uh, model, so we can request for information to the client so that it will reduce the error. So this is the pre-construction benefits. And uh, it will help you in the pre-construction uh, pre budgeting through producing the BOQ, exact accurate BOQ to the, uh, of the uh, model or uh, of the construction and uh, the coordinating coordinated drawings it will help you to produce the coordinated drawings so that it will reduce the uh, material wastage in the building and the site planning so in site planning so how to plan the design how, uh, how to uh, do a site plan and where to fix the crane properly so if I fix the crane at somewhere else, what will happen? So these details can be uh, tracked. These key detail, uh, details can be analyzed with the help of softwares, which I uh, have mentioned in the analysis software. And the construction scheduling. So using this, we can able to schedule uh, how much, uh, how long it will take to co complete the construction. So the construction procurement management. So using this, uh, uh, using BIM, we can able to produce the material details. That is why it uh, uh, the benefits of the construction procure management. In project monitor monitoring, so we can able to track the stakeholders. We can able to track uh, uh, the stakeholders involved in the project, whoever involved. Uh, so they uh, they can uh, they they have access for the model so that it is easy for tracking. So how much the model has been completed, how much the, what is the condition of the site, everything which is related to a construction. So that will be stored under a specific, uh, that will be stored under the uh, common uh, data so that everybody can access so that it will help you in the monitoring and controlling. So risk management, we can able to find out the hazardous area so that we can reduce the risk easily. So, and then a sustainability. So when I try to say the sustainability, so I would say the energy analysis and the uh, facility management. So that, that's all about the session is. And uh, so if you have any questions, you can ask me and uh, I'll just. So this is my email ID. So you could have, if you could have any questions, so that you can contact me this number as well as the email ID. You can post if you have any doubts or if you need more information regarding this. 
you can contact me at this email id and this this is my uh, official number so that you can contact me thank you ma'am yeah. uh, we have one question from the audience side yes yes what is the difference between 4d 5d 6d mm. 7d models mm. and the uses of these dimensional model how okay. these four okay. model overcome the 3d model this is the question posed by ms mm. suganti shegar mm. okay so okay. what is the difference between the difference uh, between uh, yeah, your uh, i'm getting my voice back uh, okay so let me tell you the difference so in 3d we do a 3d modeling only uh, but if we need what, what is the uh, exact time limit required for construction so uh, how long it will take so this uh, we could have model this and if we want to uh, find out uh, how much uh, how long it will take to complete this project so that will come under the 4d and uh, if we want to extract the cost details from the model so that will come under the 5d and uh, this 6d is not, uh, it's about the energy analysis as i said energy analysis we could able to find out the um, the energy which is required by uh, which is consumed by the building each and every material uh, consumes some particular energy some particular thermal energy so it it could help you to track that and uh, this uh, using 7d we could able to find uh, get the facility data from the model that's the difference between those dimensions any questions okay any questions yeah. thank you ma'am i think uh, there are no more questions okay yeah okay okay yeah uh, thank you ma'am okay. thank you so much yeah thanks for uh, on behalf of yeah. uh, department thanks for... oh, Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. On behalf, thanks for the opportunity. Oh, okay. On behalf of Department of Civil Engineering, KPR Institute of Engineering and Technology, I would like to thank our chief guest, Ms. Sandhya Devarajan, for her wonderful presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing your valuable knowledge with us, even in your busy schedule. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Also, thank I would you. like to thank our participants. Okay. Any participants okay. kindly fill the feedback form just posted in the chat box. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. And uh, I, uh, once again, are you on the line? 